Victoria Decides. Live election night coverage from 6pm Eastern Daylight Time on the 6 News YouTube channel and our website, 6newsau.com. John Pesuto, welcome to 6 News. Great to have you here. So look, you were, of course, the member for Hawthorne from 2014 until 2018 when we had that pretty big Labor upset, I think it's fair to say, um, that saw John Kennedy get in. Um, but of course, as I mentioned there, you know, the people of Hawthorne voted you out in 2018. Why would they want you back now? Well, there are a lot of issues running back then. And you, you might recall, Leo, that in 2018, just as we were preparing to go to the polls, uh, we'd had the third prime minister in as many years uh, from Tony Abbott to Malcolm Turnbull and then to Scott Morrison, of course, and people were absolutely fed up with uh, that merry-go-round and they visited their wrath on us and um, there, there were a bunch of issues, as there always are, in the state campaign of 2018. But if you really want to know, in my view, what drove that outcome and why it was so resounding, uh, I have no doubt in my mind. And I know from the interactions I had with people on election day who made it very clear why they were so angry, I have absolutely no doubt. So we really went to the people, Leo, in, in November 2018 as the first election after that third change in Prime Minister. And um, the results are there for everybody to see from that time. But a lot's happened since then, as, and I'm sure we'll talk about that. Yeah, I mean, look, well, your own party in terms of the Victorian State Liberal Party has has gone through your own, your own leaders, not when you're in Parliament in terms of the last four years, but, you know, we went from Matthew Guy resigning to Michael O'Brien getting in to an unsuccessful spill to a successful spill and, and Matthew Guy getting back in. Um, and, of course, you know, the Vic Liberals haven't been um, without controversy, Labor, of course, too, but, you know, you've had... Um, some might say issues with with pre-selection. You've had um, the next door electorate here, the outgoing member for Q, Tim Smith, embroiled in obviously the the car crash, which was in Hawthorne, might I add, as well. Here, um, is your own party, you know, in a in a stable situation right now, going into this election, given you haven't even been in government for eight years in Victoria, and since two thousand, you've only been in government for four years in Victoria. Yeah, look. I guess what I'd say is uh, every opposition has their challenges and, and um, you know, you've touched on a few there. But, look, every every contestant in this election, uh, whether it's in Hawthorne or beyond, has their own challenges and uh, no one should think that they're free of those. But talking about what the Liberals are offering in this election and certainly what I'm able to talk about with residents, Leo, there's a lot that I can talk about and do talk about with residents. So whether it's our strong position on climate change and there's... A, you know, various layers to that, whether it's public transport announcements, which are really appealing to people, particularly the $2 uh, daily fares that would come in under us, uh, the stuff we're doing on health, which I've got to tell you, Leo, it's top of the list. Everybody mentions health when you ask them what the top issues are. You know, um, even the dental announcements we've made, announcements in education. So I guess what I'm saying to you, Leo, is Yes, there are all these things that go on in campaigns and, and even in between campaigns. But what you've got to do if you really want to seek uh, the people's mandate is you've got to actually talk about what you want to do. And so I'm finding when I'm out there door knocking, as I have been for many months and phone canvassing as well, they're the issues that people really want to talk about. Once you get them on there, you know, they talk about their own priorities and their own experiences. Yeah, there are a lot of issues at play here and look, the seat of Hawthorne. Seems to be a bit of a three-way contest right now between you, the incumbent John Kennedy, and of course Teal Independent, um, Melissa Lowe. So I imagine you've been speaking to people from right across the political aisle, you know. And we also have you know Animal Justice in the, um, the Liberal Democrats, the Greens as well, who are who are contesting it. Um, so uh, apart from health and and public transport, there are there any other other issues that you think are, are really centre, not just statewide, but, yeah, for the people in Hawthorne, the people who obviously will be deciding whether you're back in as the member for Hawthorne or not? Yeah, oh, oh, absolutely, Leo. One of the big problems underlying all of the, the things I'm um, making commitments to, there's this view that uh, because people live in Burundara, everything's okay. So our local government schools don't need money. Our railway stations, tram stops, bus stops don't need shelters. Uh, that planning laws can be relaxed so you can have 
you know, pretty rampant overdevelopment in some parts of the electorate and that sports facilities and the like can miss out. So the underlying theme, Leo, of my campaign here in Hawthorne is very much that the area has been neglected for a very long time. And I don't know what school you go to, whether you go to one of the local ones, but you go to a school like Campbell or Primary School, there, I kid you not, there's plaster falling from the wall in one of the classrooms. There's a big gaping hole in the corner of the floor. And that's just not acceptable in 2022. A school like Canterbury Primary or Glenfrew Primary haven't had serious investments for more than two decades. If you look at public transport in the area, a lot of it's just dilapidated. You go to Canterbury, Canterbury um, sorry, railway station. I did a video on this in, in June. You'll see that the tactiles have worn away. The government, I think, has restored some, but not all. The, the asphalt's broken up. Uh, so there's a lot of local things that we're missing out on because we don't have a strong advocate. So, um, sorry, long answer, Leo, but there's a ton of things that need to be done locally and you need someone who's enthusiastic, energised and actually of the community who's going to champion that. Yeah, well, look, I, I go to a, a high school outside the electorate, but I used to go to Hawthorne West Primary, and and we had renovations, you know, only a few years ago. So yeah, I, I it's, the renovations weren't needed. Um, but but yeah, the other thing, of course, is uh, I, as I did mention before, this is a three way contest. Is is that making it easier or, or harder for you? Given some might say that the traditional kind of Labor vote might be a bit split up between Kennedy and Lowe, um, but also um, it seemed, and we saw this federally, the Teal seemed to be gaining votes from for Liberals, from your party. Mm, there, there, I even have competing views within my own team, <laughs> to be honest, Leo, about how all this plays out. The first thing I'll say, Leo, is I'm much more fatalistic after 2018 in that anything is possible, right? John Kennedy, if memory serves, was pre-selected you know, in, in October and found himself in Parliament a few weeks later. So um, anything can happen. No one should assume this is a three-horse, two-horse or four-horse race. It, anyone, depending on how the preferences flow, um, could potentially do well. Uh, that's the first thing. The second thing is I'm, I'm not entirely sure about uh, the, uh, the theory that uh, Teal candidates draw votes from Liberals. I'm, I'm not sure about it. Uh, the reason I say that is that there are competing views about whether they gain most of their votes from Labor. And that that's probably where I gravitate to. Um, because they're not of the major parties, I get it. You can draw views from, from wherever. But my view, and, and I've seen some work on this that uh, suggests that they're, they're more than likely to, to garner most of their support from a Labor um, a Labor member or, or a Labor candidate. The other interesting thing, Leo, which a lot of people don't factor in, which wasn't present when uh, people voted in Kuyong at the federal election, Hawthorne has a Labor incumbent. Now, think for a moment. If you are a traditional Labor voter, are you going to change your first preference from a Labor incumbent who's actually there compared with, say, Kuyong, when you had no prospect of a Labor member getting up in that race. No, no one seriously entertained that. So, again, none of us know for certain. Don't, don't believe anybody who thinks they've got this worked out. It's, it, it's just a race. You just have to run as hard as you can to the finish line. It's, it, yeah, it is going to be very close, regardless of who gets up on a two-party preferred level. Um, I'm, you know, following it with EG, in, even though I'm just just because I'm in the electorate, you know, there's there's a lot of reasons to be following this race closely. Um, something that has been seen in I think the four seats where we have a, a teal candidate, um, and and then also uh through the Liberal Party social media is that you've been using this label of of teal party. Is it fair given there there is no official teal party? I mean, I I know four candidates have the backing of Climate Two Hundred this election, and they are on on similar issues, but but. There is no official party. Is, is there a bit of a stretch there to claim there is a teal party? Look, I get the argument that they're not a registered political party, and that's a fact. You can't deny that. But, Leo, it, I think most people know, don't they, that it is a centrally coordinated um, movement, whether you call it a party. Now, is that wrong? No, of course not. But to suggest, and this is where I do um, take a... a a slightly different view, perhaps, Leo, than, than the one you just articulated, is that I don't accept that they are separate campaigns. 
the people working on campaigns are uh, sharing their time and, and resourcing and, and all across different seats. Now, that's that's fine. I just don't want to be told that they're separate and wholly independent when in terms of the activities that they're undertaking, they're, they're one movement in my view, and that's that's their prerogative. But as I said, I'm just not going to accept that it's separate, wholly independent campaigns. It makes sense that they're working on the similar campaign. I mean, Hawthorne and Q are next to each other. It, it doesn't it make sense that you might see the same people helping out with each other, given they both have a very common goal? They they want to be able to get a Teal Independent into Parliament? Oh, sure, sure. But, but then the only thing separating what um, many Teal supporters criticise the Labor Party and the Greens and the Nationals and the Liberal Party for is a technical fact of registration that in any that in all other respects they're as coordinated as we are and that's that's the point i've made to people who've raised it with me is that fair enough it's, it's very easy when you are a genuine independent to say oh look the major parties are all bad and we're terrific i, I get that i get the politics i've been around campaigns a long time i do find it you know, difficult to buy that though leo when i'm looking at what they're doing and thinking but for the fact of registration, you're the same. Now, the other thing too is when I was pre-selected or when John Kennedy was endorsed as the Labor candidate, when Nick Savage was endorsed as the Greens candidate, and you run through all the other parties, you know that it's the party choosing that candidate. Now, we don't know who chose their candidates. Um, that's fine. But I just I don't necessarily appreciate um, criticisms of us when in terms of actual activities – they're doing the same thing. That goes into what I was going to bring up next. Um, you know, I saw uh, there was a media release from the Liberals a few days ago um, that cited old tweets as proof Melissa Lowe self-selected herself as the candidate. Um, but but that that Twitter account, I think the ad is um, Mel for Hawthorne. That that wasn't a Melissa Lowe Twitter account. That was a, an account called Hawthorne Independence. I don't, I don't see how how you guys, the Liberals, can claim that, that she self-selected herself when it was a it was a collective account. It wasn't her campaign account. You just, the display name changes when you go through old tweets. Uh, look, I, I don't know who ran the account before. My understanding it was run by somebody else. That wasn't uh, my press release. But I would, I would take the opportunity to, if you like, reiterate the point that, you know, no one quite knows what processes are adopted in terms of the selection of a teal candidate and that's fine but you know at least you know with a greens candidate or a labor candidate or a liberal or any other political party candidate that's endorsed you know there's a process and it's reasonably transparent um i would say that, that wasn't the case here but in terms of that press release i, I don't think anybody's really spending any time and certainly i'm not um, just focused on the local campaign there. gotcha now the other thing is um this is something i see people from whether they support the Liberals or not, that they seem to be saying is that you are someone that should be or could be very well the leader of the Liberal Party. Um, do you have any ambitions of that, given, you know, you might get back in, but the Liberals might not form government um, or, or you know, get into government at all? Um, do you have any ambitions to become leader? Is that something you want? Well, Leo, all I've ever really said on this is that, um, you know, politics is too uncertain in my experience and all my time in politics, that uh, really what I what I deeply believe is that, uh, you know, leadership is, is something that uh, you exhibit by your actions. So if you are obsessed about a particular role, whether it's leader or some other role, I don't think you're focusing on the main game, which is to bring all of your skills and experience and knowledge um, to the task you're doing. And it's for me, leadership is more about the role you play than the position you occupy. I've always found, Leo, that may not be a satisfactory answer for you, but I, I do think in politics, and I say this to student groups I talk to all the time and other audiences, that that has always held me in good stead. Um, but for the setback in, in 2018, I might have had a chance to, to play some senior roles going forward. But it, it, look, I've got a huge mountain to climb in getting back in Hawthorne. It's a, it's a competitive race here. Um, and really, I, I can't look beyond the 26th of November to be really candid with you, Leo. 
Yeah. Now the other thing is, um, and we 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 go back to independence because again, you're you're against the Labor challenger, but when I look and a lot of people look around Hawthorne, it does seem to be majority either signs for yourself or signs for Melissa Lowe. Something again, the Liberals have also been claiming, and we have seen in the is that a teal party, if we want to use that term, a teal party candidate is a vote for Dan Andrews, or in some cases we've seen Liberal Party um, uh, signage that it just said blanketly an independent is a vote for Dan Andrews. Um, when you look at the preferential voting in s- system in place in our lower house, where only people who, you know, on- only the voters can choose where their preferences go, where that lines up, whether they want to put a Liberal Party candidate like yourself over Labor. When you look at that, is, isn't is that just a, a false claim to blanketly state a vote for a teal or a vote for an independent is a vote for Dan Andrews? I don't think so, Leo. And I'd see it slightly different. And I'd say to our viewers, um, my reasons for that are that um, uh, my teal uh, candidate here in Hawthorne uh, was given the opportunity the other night uh, at a forum of candidates to say what she would do uh, depending on the result, didn't didn't even state what you'd said as far as I can recall her words. But I don't think there's any doubt in my own mind, and I can look, Leah, I can only speak for myself. Um, I don't have any doubt that in the case of a hung parliament, uh, the Teal candidate in Hawthorne, um, should she be successful, would support the Labor government. I, I, I don't have any doubt about that. Um, sure, um, circumstances could prove me wrong, but I, I just don't see it. Um, and I think on the public record, um, uh, my teal opponent has stated that she's been a member of the Labor Party twice. Again, it doesn't mean that she can't run as an independent uh, or, or, or part of the, the teal movement, as I would see it. Um, not at all. But what it does mean is, in my mind, it, it suggests that the likelihood of um, her and other teal candidates, should they be successful supporting anyone other than the Labor Party, is, is less likely. I, I do think there's a very strong likelihood of that happening. So I do see it slightly differently, Leo, but um, hey, circumstances will, will tell us in time. Gotcha. By the way, I hope we don't get to that point, but, but um, uh, we'll see. Yeah. No, we shall see. And that, look, that brings us into, as again, what I was going to say, um, I look, I, I, I hate going off the polls, but the, the polls do seem to be favouring Labor here. Now, I know I think a news poll had it was even between Labor and the Coalition on a first preference basis, but it, Labor still has that very significant two-party preferred lead. And from a lot of analysis saying even those who are very anti-Labor have just been saying, you know, they, they struggle to find a situation where the Liberals could get a minority government, let alone a majority. There, there are a lot of seats you have to win here. And, of course, again, you could lose some seats as well. Um, how are you feeling uh, in terms of in terms of how everything's going to go generally? Because, it, again, from an outside perspective, someone who's not in the Liberal Party here, um, it does seem to be a very, very big struggle for you guys. Oh, 18 seats is... is- tall order, but is definitely achievable. I've got no doubt about that either, Leo. Uh, We've seen elections historically uh, show that you can win this number of seats. Look, no one knows for sure, Leo, just how big some of the swings are in different parts of metropolitan Melbourne, out of metropolitan Melbourne, and in the regions and rural parts of Victoria. It's all over the place. And I, uh, you know, I I suspect that in Labor Party headquarters, they're probably looking at the number of high undecideds. Uh, On my understanding, you know, undecideds are close to 30%, maybe more. Uh, if you're an incumbent government, you'd be worried about that too. So, Leah, I don't take anything away from your first proposition. It's, you know, 18 seats is a lot of seats, but I've been around long enough to know that it is achievable. Uh, and we just have to keep rolling out positive ideas, which we've been doing, uh, and um, keep the pressure on the government and keep reminding people that they do have that choice. But, you know, parts of Melbourne, like, you know, west of Melbourne, uh, there are, you know, both parties, I think, are tracking some fairly potentially large swings. So, you know, we've got everything to work towards. And that's all, Leo, at the end of the day with a campaign, that is all you can do. Keep believing in yourself, believe in the cause, and just run as hard as you can to the finish line. Yeah, and and look, of course, a swing against Labor does not necessarily translate to a swing towards the coalition. Again, we have um, independents out in the West, might add. We also have the Greens who look like they could could pick up a few seats here. So, yeah, it's going to be really interesting. Just quickly... 
again, and it goes back to the fact that we had an independent win uh, federally in Kuyong uh, in May. There, there does seem to be growing disdain for the major parties. There does seem to be, some say, growing anger, just a general movement away from both Labor and the Liberals and, and as, as well the Nationals in, in regional areas here. Um, what is the main thing you think sets the Liberal Party apart from the Labor Party in terms of the, you being the two major parties? Yeah, look, I, I, I'll say what I, what certainly what I'm campaigning on, Leo. Uh, for me, it's much more prudential management of the resources of our state. And I'm not just talking about taxpayers' dollars. It's about the governance. So to give an example, you know, managing our health system in a way where when you say you're going to make commitments in budget after budget, you deliver on those commitments. And I don't think there's any doubt now that when you go back over the budget papers over the last eight years, you'll see repeated assurances that there were investments being made in our health system. The other thing that's really important sets us apart, Leo, is the accountability and oversight piece. I think one of the big problems, and I talk to, to voters across Hawthorne every day about this multiple times, the management or mismanagement of Victoria's infrastructure portfolio is one of the uh, singular uh, most significant risks to our financial stability as a state. And imagine if we could manage our infrastructure projects more prudentially so you're not blowing out those projects by $30 billion and had that money for health, education, child protection, justice, you name it. Um, and on the integrity piece, uh, we were the first ones out, having created IBAC under Ted Bailey, we were the first ones out with commitments to secure IBAC and the Ombudsman's funding and to give it more powers, give both of them more powers. So on those things alone, I'll go into a whole long list of things, but you can see an approach to prudential management on behalf of the people, accountability and oversight. No government should have uh, this to fear. Uh, if you're doing the right thing, you shouldn't have anything to fear, and yet the government stonewalls on that. So there are some critical differences. But can I just say something, because you do raise an important point about uh, uh, what uh, independence is saying about the major parties. At the end of the day, Leo, you do have to make decisions and you have to start getting specific in what you're prepared to endorse or say in the parliament and decide with your votes and everything else that you can do with the platform and resources of an MP. And I, I say to all of your viewers and followers that standing, you know, with the vantage uh, of being outside a major party and just constantly criticising, okay, that's easy, I get it. But what I'd ask your viewers and, and uh, your followers to start doing is just start interrogating a bit of those slogans and just start digging a bit deeper and ask, well, what does that actually mean for me, my friends, my community? And I think that's a really important thing to do. Look, it's going to be a really interesting campaign, both statewide and in Hawthorne, and, and who knows, I might, I might see you around this area, but um, I've, I've certainly seen your, your core flutes everywhere. But look, best of luck with the campaign, John Pesuto. Thank you very much for your time. Pleasure, Leah.